because I have a dream. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Dr. King once said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? The humanitarians we honor today clearly understand Dr. King's call and are answering by making dramatic improvements in the lives of so many others. Today, we celebrate the content of their character. Hello everyone, I'm Tamara Banks and welcome to the 2022 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Business Awards as we honor four inspirational individuals and companies in our community and pay special tribute to one of our civil rights pioneers with the Trailblazer Award. This year marks the 37th anniversary of this event. In 1986, two years after the passage of House Bill 1201 that established Dr. King's birthday as a holiday in Colorado, Mrs. Wilma J. Webb founded the Martin Luther King Jr. Business Social Responsibility Awards to give the business community an opportunity to honor the memory of Dr. King and reaffirm our commitment to the values he taught us. Seven years ago, the name of the award was shortened to the Martin Luther King Jr. Business Awards. A total of 260 individuals, corporations, and nonprofit organizations have received this meaningful award over the years. Today, we add five more names to this distinguished list. It all started with a little field trip. Little did the students know that the trip would significantly alter their perspective on life. In the fall of 2019, students and staff from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Early College embarked on a trip to visit Howard University and Georgetown University, tour Washington, D.C., and visit the National African American History Museum. The trip was designed for the students to do research, think critically, and grow as scholars and as people. A lot of us were like, we just get to leave school, <laughs> we get a break from normal life. But when we actually went there, it was definitely a trip that changed all of our lives. When George Floyd was murdered by a Minneapolis police officer and the uprising in the Black Lives Matter movement sparked protests throughout the world, Janelle Naga, Alana Mitchell, Kalia Yazar, and Danny Austin were even more motivated to share their voice. When COVID happened, everyone was at home and the murder of George Floyd happened. And for me personally, it was very emotional. After seeing someone of my skin tone that was being murdered by police brutality, especially for a reason that did not make sense, it was just very heartbreaking. And with that, the No Justice, No Peace, that's K-N-O-W, podcast was created by these four dynamic young women. The podcast eventually led to the passage of the No Justice, No Peace resolution in Denver Public Schools, acknowledging that the history of Black, Indigenous, and people of color must be taught as part of the curriculum in the district. Our podcast actually started talking about Frederick Douglass's What to the Slave is the Fourth of July. We really just want to talk about a lot of things that we hadn't learned in school as black students about our own black history. And without your history, you don't really know who you are yourself because you don't know who, where you are and where your roots came from. So you can't become the best version of yourself unless you know your history. John Bailey is the CEO and principal of the Bailey Consulting Network, chair of the Black Economic Opportunities Council, and founder and lead convener of the Black Cannabis Equity Initiative. To whom much is given, uh, much is expected. And therefore, how do you use what you know about what you know uh, to be able to make a difference in the community? John is a political, business, and corporate community consultant who specializes in social equity, diversity and inclusion programming, as well as community engagement, planning, project implementation, and outreach. He's a former New Jersey Municipal Cabinet appointee and National Director of Weed and Seed with the Bush and Clinton administrations. You know, I became a key architect in terms of trying to make sure that programmatically those things that were important, violent offenders removal, neighborhood revitalization, safe haven, uh, and uh, community-oriented policing 
were in fact things that were put forward on the table in terms of how we go about dealing with 21st century policing uh, and public safety in this country. John is also the guiding force behind the Colorado Black Roundtable, a statewide organization composed of elected officials, community organizations, faith leaders, educators, and citizens. Part of who I am is having good people around you that will allow you to be able to get the job done. Uh, as you know, I just lost the most important person uh, and Dr. Bailey. Sadly, John's wife, Dr. Sharon Bailey, passed away on Friday, December 3rd. She was a dedicated civil rights activist and ombudsperson to Denver Public Schools. More than 30 years ago, former First Bank President Ken Chi started to teach financial literacy to non-English speaking Chinese communities. It was a vision and a commitment to provide the most basic banking services to diverse ethnic communities. And for us, you know, with multicultural banking, it's creating that American dream. You know, I think that's, we think that's really important. You know, most people come to this country not knowing, you know, the American banking system and they have that extra layer where they need to learn the language, they need to, you know, understand the, how to, the American way of life. And so it's, we're, we're there to kind of help them and guide them through the process. When Tony Ohm's father dreamed of opening a restaurant, he came to First Bank to help finance the new business. My parents were from Cambodia. They were refugees from Cambodia. They lived, they survived, and they lived through the Khmer Rouge regime. Um, so during the war, when there was no food, he was thought, I was, one day I'm gonna start a restaurant. Tony remembers the excitement his family felt when they received notice that they were approved for a $60,000 loan. Tony started working alongside his father in the restaurant at nine years old, along with his brother and mother. 13 years after his parents opened the restaurant, Tony graduated from college and was ready to start his career. As fortune would have it, Tony applied for a position at First Bank. Today, Tony is the executive vice president of the First Bank Multicultural Banking Center, a concept he has been developing since 2015. Samuel Engineering was founded in 1996 by Claudia Samuel primarily with an electrical design focus. So I usually refer to it as my fifth child. <laughs> in 2000, her husband Evra joined the company. We have two core values. One is excellence uh, in everything we do, and the other one is compassion. SE has managed projects in more than 30 countries worldwide. In 2008, the company was ranked in the Inc. 500 list of fastest growing private companies in the U.S. SE was also voted one of the top workplaces by the Denver Post in 2013. In 2019, SE won the Rocky Mountain and Texas Oil and Gas Engineering Company of the Year Award for the fourth time. I finished my bachelor's in electrical engineering in 1990. Our first child, Vanessa, was born in 1991, Howard 1992, Crystal 1993, and Evelyn 1995. Also in 1995, I finished a master's degree in electrical engineering. During that five years, I also worked for a couple large engineering companies on a part-time basis. So by 1996, with four kids and a master's degree, it was just too much to try to find good quality childcare and still you know, work full-time outside, outside the home. So that's why I started the company, really. Two of their children also work for the company. The Samuels are from the tiny Caribbean island of Grenada. It was ingrained in them at an early age, at home, at church, and at school, that all people should be valued no matter their socioeconomic level, skin color, nationality, or life choices. And Essie has an unparalleled commitment to their employees and the community. I think it's very important to give back. You flourish more when you give back. In 2007, we began honoring our civil rights pioneers with the Trailblazer Award. Our 16th honoree is Dennis Gallagher. The remarkable 45-year political career of Dennis Gallagher has had its ups and downs. Fortunately, there have been more ups than downs. Born in Tabernash, Dennis has deep roots in Colorado. He attended public schools in Denver, received a Bachelor of Arts degree in English Literature with a minor in Latin and Greek from Regis College and a Master's degree in Speech and Communications from Catholic University in Washington, D.C. 
Since 1967, he's been a professor of speech, Latin, Greek, and media at Regis University. Dennis attended Holy Family School where missions traveled all over the world and the southern U.S. and brought back stories of prejudice. That and racial injustice his Irish family encountered nudged him toward making a difference in the world as a civil servant. My dad, when he first became a member of the Denver Fire Department, he was number four hired that year. There was one fire truck in the house and this guy comes up to him and says, Gallagher, you Irish Catholics on the north side of the fire truck, we Ku Kluxers on the south side of the fire truck. And after work, my dad took that guy out and cleaned his socks off, as they would say. Today he would be fired for not going to mediation. It sensitized me to the fact that there were other worse prejudices going on in Denver. He served two terms in the Colorado House, five in the Colorado Senate, two on the Denver City Council, and was Denver City Auditor for 12 years. During his time as a Colorado State Senator, Dennis watched his colleague, State Representative Wilma J. Webb, fight to bring the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday to Colorado. For years, we were trying to get this bill through for the Martin Luther King uh, holiday in Colorado. And I'll never forget, uh, I think it was Reverend James Boyd, if I remember correctly, his testimony in the committee just really moved me. He said, I might even want to put up an American flag in front of my house if they have a, a day in honor of Amer African American leadership in America. And that really moved me and made me want to work real hard for this bill. Once House Bill 1201 passed the House, Dennis personally walked the bill to the Senate for approval. Governor Richard Lamb signed the bill on April 4, 1984, 16 years after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. King's memorable words of love, hope, and compassion have clearly stirred the souls of the humanitarians we honor today with the 2022 Martin Luther King Jr. Business Awards. We celebrate the content of their character and applaud their efforts to make life better for so many people in Colorado. Free at last, free at last. Thanks, God Almighty. We are free at last.